Dear viewer, does it ever bother you like it bothers me when you have people like politicians or snowflakes demanding rights? I mean, I thought rights were established in 1787 from the Constitution, but apparently not. You see, we really don't know the difference between rights and goods, but I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the difference between rights and goods. So, in case you haven't noticed, I love history. I read it, I research it, I live, eat, breathe it. I even have historical tattoos on my arm because I just, I'm a history nerd. And that doesn't mean that I know it all. In fact, the more I read, the more I realize I don't know anything. And that'll be probably the way it'll be until the way I die. So I just wanted to let you know, don't take my word for it. Do your own research. But I wanted to explain the difference between rights and goods in this video. You see, the brilliance of the Founding Fathers can be found in the Declaration of Independence when they had, <clears throat> if I may quote, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. Well, unalienable, what, what is that, right? Well, it's interesting because the fact of the matter is, is you, my friend, you are born with your rights. You can't give them away. You cannot have them taken away. You're born with them, and no matter what you do, you're going to die with them. And that's what's so amazing. And notice that the founders didn't say that it came from other men. It said that, it, that we're endowed by our Creator, capital C, the big guy upstairs. That's the, that's the best option, people. Because if we want to start letting people grant us our rights, well, you have to realize that they can be the same people that can take them away. And so you might have a politician pitching it to you like this dingbat. Good old AOC, the new face of the Democrat Party, who likes to dance on top of rooftops and guarantee her constituents' rights like housing. Right? Okay, no. That's the fundamental problem that I see with this. Rights don't cost anything, but goods do. If you want to give everybody a house, well, how are we going to pay for that? That demands that now we must rob from Peter and Mary to give to Paul. That makes Paul subservient to the government and thus squashes his potential. I would love for everybody to have health care, believe me, and jobs, and housing, and, 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 and education. However, these are goods, goods that we're blessed with in America. But you have to understand, if you want to have goods as rights, well, now we're at a, at a complete odds with the Declaration. Because now, instead of the Creator giving us our rights, we're allowing humans to give us rights. And if you want humans to give you rights, they sure will take it away from you. Where have I seen that in history before? Where, where people guarantee goods as rights to their constituents. It was great, great idea on paper, but man, it sucked in practice. Where was that? Let's do our history research, people. Hey, but moreover, did you like the history content? Leave us a thumbs up if you did. And if you're a history buff like me and you want me to cover some other topic of your choice, leave it in the comment below. Make sure you stay tuned because we got more content coming. Thanks for watching.